Hey there, and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. As we continue the renovation projects, we're now moving into the kitchen. And so in today's video, we'll be building some basic kitchen cabinets. So we'll walk through the steps of building the carcass, the face frames, doors, drawers, and a walnut butcher block top. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get started with today's project. Here's a quick look at the kitchen we started out with, which was a dated 1970s kitchen with old cabinets, counters, and appliances that all needed some updates. I pretty much tore everything out, knocked down the wall to open up the room, and started making changes to give it a more modern feel. I wanna give a big shout out to Maytag for sponsoring this video and helping out with the new stainless steel appliances to update the home. The fridge works awesome and I love having the middle drawer. I went with Maytag's fingerprint resistant stainless steel finish option, which definitely helps if you have kiddos running around the house. I've been using the appliances a few months so far and I couldn't be more happy with them. The first step to building a cabinet is to build the carcass. Now I used pre-finished three quarter inch plywood and I started making the cuts using a table saw. When you're working with a full sheet of plywood, it's a really good idea to have a friend or family member help out and for this project, Danny stopped over to check out the cabinet building process. I started by building the sides of the cabinet, and once the plywood was a bit more manageable, I used a straight edge and then followed the lines with a circular saw to make those initial cuts. Next, I made a template out of scrap wood to trace around for the toe kick portion of the cabinet. I sandwiched the sideboards together with a couple clamps, traced around the toe kick template, and then cut out the section with a jigsaw. I cut a couple three quarter inch thick strips from the plywood to use to connect the outer boards together and then cut them down in length on a miter saw. A pocket hole jig is a quick and efficient tool for helping with the cabinet making process, but feel free to use whatever types of joints you'd like. Set a pocket hole jig for three quarter inch stock and drill about three holes on each end. Then put a few pocket holes along the upper side of the board so we'll be able to tie it into the base of the cabinet. Mark for pocket holes on the outer sides of the left and right sideboards. Use pocket holes about every six to eight inches to attach the cabinet carcass to the frame, which we'll do in a later step. The pocket holes will actually be hidden by either a wall, another cabinet, or by covering it with a side panel, so don't worry about that. Start connecting the two outer boards. We'll use one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws on each end, and I'd recommend using wood glue as well. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna be using wood glue for all the steps, just in case I mess up and need to undo something for the tutorial. We'll attach the front board in the toe kick area as well. Next, I cut the base panel for the cabinets out of three quarter inch plywood, which is essentially the bottom shelf for the cabinet carcass. I put three pocket holes on the underside ends of the base panel and then slid it into place. Secure the base panel from the underside at each pocket hole location with wood glue and one and a quarter inch long screws. Clamps are going to come in really handy throughout the build to help hold the boards during assembly. Next we'll add the top rear support. This board's going to square up the cabinet carcass and it's also going to be used when attaching the cabinet to the wall during the install process. You'll want to use a couple pocket holes at each end. I cut a similar sized board to fasten to the front top area. This board's going to provide additional strength and it's going to serve as support for a counter and works well for securing a countertop from the underside like we'll do for a butcher block top in a later step. Notice the pocket holes facing forward, which we'll use to connect it to the face frame. I decided to add one more board to the top back area so I have a really secure and well-supported butcher block. It attaches at each side and then to the other rear support. Now we'll move on to the face frame for the cabinets. This is going to be made of poplar boards that are three quarter inches thick and one and a half inches wide. Cut the lengths to size on a miter saw. Now I used some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly sand the ends to remove rough edges, but made sure to not round anything over because I want nice square and tight joints. Use two pocket holes at each joint and make sure the jig is set up for three quarter inch thick stock on both the tool and the drill bit stop collar. Then use a face clamp to help hold the boards in place while attaching them to each other using one and a quarter inch long screws. And really take your time with this process to ensure everything is lined up as best as possible. We'll attach another face frame board which will separate the drawer area from the shelf and cabinet door area. Cut three shorter boards to the same length. 
Two of them are going to be used as spacers while you assemble the face frame, and the third's going to be used in the face frame to separate the left door space and the right door area. After making the face frame and seeing the drawer area, I decided I wanted the back support board to be a little wider to help out with the drawer slide process in a later step. So I ended up quickly removing the rear support board and then replacing it with one that's a few inches wider. Next I started working on the butcher block top so I could get it glued up and then let it dry while I was building the rest of the cabinet. I picked up some 4-4 walnut from the local lumber yard and began ripping it in two and a quarter inch strips. My goal was to have about a two inch thick butcher block after the slabs were run through the planer uh, to smooth everything out. After running each board through the table saw, I cut them down in length to a little longer than the actual length I wanted for the finished countertop. This way I'll have a little wiggle room during the glue up process and can cut the entire butcher block end square after the glue up and planing process. It's going to take about 22 boards to make this walnut butcher block and we ran them through a planer to get the faces smooth. I got out some clamps and started the glue up process. We decided to do the butcher block in two sections and then to join them after each was complete. This way we could run each section through the planer since my planer has a maximum width of material it can plane at one time. And then after adding glue to each board, we clamped them together and then wiped up the excess glue with a damp rag and finally let the butcher block cure. I made an 8 inch spacer and then used a shelf pin jig to easily create the adjustment holes for the cabinet shelf. Simply clamp the jig on the inner side of each board and the stop collar is going to help ensure that the pin depth doesn't go through the wood. The left side of the cabinet is going to be exposed since there isn't a wall or a cabinet by it. So I cut a side panel for it out of quarter inch thick plywood which will be painted and then attached to cover up the exposed side with the pocket hole screws. By this time the first glue up had cured and so we removed the clamps and then glued up the boards to form the second slab. Now it was time to attach the face frame. I gave it a quick sanding and then rotated the cabinet on its side so I could put the face frame in place. It should overlap the left and right side of the cabinet carcass by about a quarter of an inch and it's going to be flush with the top. Now, since this is a fairly large cabinet, I wanted to secure the face frame with pocket holes and screws from the base panel too. So I temporarily removed the toe kick and this allowed me to be able to drill and get the screws into the face frame from the underside of the cabinet. Once the face frame was attached, I put the toe kick back in place. I glued and then used screws to attach the two pieces of three quarter inch plywood together to separate the drawers and then to give me a place to mount the drawer slides. Pocket holes were drilled on each end so it can be fastened to the back of the cabinet and then to the face frame. Once it's ready, go ahead and attach it using one and a quarter inch screws and wood glue. And remember, I'm not using glue in every step today just in case I need to change something for the tutorial. I cut plywood strips to form the sides of the drawers, and once these were cut, I ran each board on the router table and cut a quarter inch slot to slide the plywood into to form the base of the drawer. I then made pocket holes on the front and back boards to secure them to each other. So you'll secure three sides together, you'll add some glue to the slot, then add the quarter inch plywood, and then finally connect that fourth side. The pocket holes on the back side of the drawer will never be seen, and the pocket holes on the front side will be covered with the drawer front, so you won't ever see those either. I added a half inch thick piece of plywood to the inside of the cabinet on each side that was flush with the inner part of the face frame so that I'll be able to mount the drawer slides. I removed the second slab from the clamps, scraped off some of the dried glue, and then ran each slab through the planer. We planed each side and got it down to two inches in overall thickness. And once this was complete, I used a biscuit joiner and some biscuits and glue to join the final two slabs together and did a final glue up. Now it was time to add the drawer slides. You'll want to read the manufacturer's directions for the slides that you buy. I use soft close hinges for this project and a jig to help mount them, but I've definitely mounted plenty of them without the help of a jig and it works just fine. Now I got the drawer slide level and then attached it with a couple screws and the front of the drawer slide is very close to being flush with the face frame. Grab the drawer and then attach the slide to it. Um, the overall width of the drawer should be one inch less than the opening 
uh, for this type of drawer slide. That way you have a half inch on each side to compensate for the drawer slide. Make adjustments as needed until it opens and closes correctly. I finished up the butcher block by removing the clamps. Then I squared up each end with a circular saw. I then sanded the top, slightly rounded the sides, and finally added some butcher block oil and conditioner. I ripped a poplar board down in width for the drawer fronts and then cut to length on the miter saw. Then it was time to build the cabinet doors. I used a tongue and groove bit set to create a quarter inch slot in each rail and in each style. Now the rails will fit inside the styles and they'll have a tongue on the left and the right side so that they fit into the style, which is the vertical board. Cut a quarter inch thick panel, which is going to slide into the slot that you just cut. Then assemble the rail and styles and then add glue into the slot. Slide the panel in and then put the bottom rail in place. Lastly, you can clamp up each door, wipe up any excess glue with a damp rag, and let the glue dry. I then cut a shelf out of uh, three quarter inch plywood. I added a one by three board underneath it to help support it, just since it's a longer span and it had a bit of a bow in it, so it helped straighten it a bit. Then I cut a quarter inch thick piece of plywood for the back of the cabinet. Uh, I did spray it quick, just with a clear sealer, and then attached it from the back side using a couple screws. Then it was time to start painting. I put on a coat of primer using a foam roller. And the reason it already had some paint on it is because I was experimenting spraying, but I really didn't like the fumes and I wanted to make this project as DIY friendly as possible. So I decided to use a special uh, roll-on water-based cabinet paint uh, with enamel. While letting some of the paint dry, I used an iron to add some edge banding to the shelf. And once that glue cools down, you can just take a razor blade to remove the excess and then you have a nice finished edge. I sealed the edge with a spray sealer and then I did the bottom panels of each drawer. I'd recommend doing two thin coats and sanding between each. The doors were sanded with 220 grit sandpaper and then I drilled the holes for the hinges. I used a jig for this process which makes it really easy to line up everything perfectly because uh, basically once it's set up, you simply clamp it in place, drill the large hole, and then drill the pilot holes for the couple screws. Once the first door is done, you can go ahead and do the second. Then give it a quick sanding and a wipe down with a rag and a tack cloth prior to painting. I used two coats of primer on the doors and started with the back sides. I used a brush to get the paint into the corners and then into the holes for the hinges. And then I moved on to a foam roller for pretty much everything else. The latex primer dried really quickly and I sanded between the primer and the uh, cabinet paint with some 400 grit sandpaper. It was much warmer in the basement than the garage so I moved my painting station inside. I painted the cabinets with three to four thin coats of paint which was that special water-based paint with enamel in it, specifically for cabinets. I rolled the paint on with the foam roller and tried to do it in a Y pattern when I could, and then I back rolled to remove any lines or bubbles. It was a pretty meticulous job, but I'd say good preparation and patient painting um, will lead to results that you'll be happy with. Now I know having them professionally sprayed would be awesome, um, but if you're trying to do this yourself and to save some money, I'd say this is a great option. Once the painting was complete, I carried the cabinet up to the kitchen and moved it into place. Now you might wonder what the deal is with the other cabinets and counters. And basically, I had to get the home to pass an appraisal. So I had to make the home livable by quickly putting in some of the cheapest cabinets and counters I could find. So all those other counters will actually be replaced at some point with some different cabinets. I'm going to put in a large island and then do concrete countertops. I tacked the side panel on with 18 gauge nails and then added some double sided tape to the drawers to align the drawer fronts. Simply get the spacing you're looking for, then push the drawer front onto the tape. I then attach the drawer front from the inside using a few screws. Repeat these steps for the second drawer. Next, I attached a trim piece for the toe kick area, and then it was time to get the doors installed. I used one and a quarter inch overlay hinges for this project. I mounted the doors so there was about a three eighths inch gap between the bottom of the drawer and the top of the door. 
I attach the hinges to the cabinet with screws, and then once they're up, you can adjust the cabinets if needed. I centered the poles for the drawers and then drilled the holes. I found that having different cabinet making jigs was really helpful and saved a lot of time. So it, definitely if you're going to be building a lot of cabinets, I'd highly recommend getting a few jigs. The cabinet hardware is quick to install and put a nice finishing touch on the project. Once the cabinet hardware was installed and looking good, I secured the cabinet in place with a few screws. Then I attached the butcher block to the cabinet from the underside added rubber bumpers to the doors, oiled up the walnut butcher block, and called it good. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope it inspires you to get out in your garage and build some projects, maybe even some cabinets. And if you're wanting to build some cabinets, you might practice on some cabinets for maybe your laundry room or your garage first, and then move into your kitchen once you have some of the basics under your belt. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other videos as well. Uh, take care and cheers from Montana.